Wilhelm Bill Solheim. Wilhelm Bill Solheim. Wilhelm Bill Solheim. If you had any idea what you have done. So there's this idea that um, in distant antiquity, the ancestors of the Viet were the first to enter the area of what is today East Asia and that they created the foundation of what later came to be known as Chinese or East Asian civilization. This idea has existed since at least the late 1940s when this guy Li Dong Ah first proposed it in some brief writings. It was expanded upon in the 1960s by Lung Gim Din. And then in the late 1990s, there, were, there was a group of scholars, a group of writers who contributed to this idea by bringing in new information, and in particular by bringing in Western uh, scholarship. There's, like I said, there's a group of people who contributed to this, but the most important was a man by the name of uh, Gung Din Tang, who, um, like the he was born. There's a group of people who contributed to this, but the most important was a man by the name of uh, Gung Din Tang, who, um, like Lung Gim Din, he was born in uh, the northern part of Vietnam. He went overseas in, I think, the early 50s to study public administration in the US. Then he returned to Vietnam, and like Lung Gim Din, went to the south, where he worked in the 1960s and early 70s. During that time period, he published a journal, or edited a journal, um, called Cultural Development, or Phat Chien Văn Hoa. Um, and then in 1975, he apparently stopped, um, you know, doing whatever he was doing. Uh, the biographical information that I've been, that I've been able to find about him is very limited. The, the biographical information, the biographical information that I have about him um, is not very clear. I haven't been able to find out much, but it indicates that you know, in 1975, for whatever reason, he, he stopped doing whatever he was doing. And in the 90s, he immigrated to Australia, where later in that decade, he established a kind of organization called the um, Hoi Phat Chien Văn Hoa Vietnam Dai Quoc Ngoi, the um, Association for the Development of Vietnamese Culture Overseas, um, or the Overseas Association for the Development of uh, Vietnamese Culture. And one of the most important activities of this group was the publication of a journal called um, Dap San De Deng, um, or I guess we could just translate it as thought. Um, but that might get make the narrative here confusing. I'm just gonna refer to it by his Vietnamese name, Dap San De Deng. Um, in this journal, uh, Gum Din Tang published, started publishing it in the late 90s and early 2000s. This was, of course, a time when the internet was becoming more widely available, and Gum Din Tang took advantage of that to upload PDF versions of the journal to the internet. Um, today, that website that was once created no longer exists, but by using a web page called the Wayback Machine, I was able to um, go back and find some of the materials that um, existed in the past. In the very first issue of um, De De, or Thought, uh, Gum Din Tang expresses ideas that are very similar to the ones that um, Lung Gim Din had in the 60s and that um, Jem Nap, uh, Nap Tem had at basically the same time in the 90s. 
Um, in particular, Gum Dinh Thang was also nervous that Vietnamese culture was uh, threatened by bigger forces like globalization. Um, from his vantage point in Australia in the 1990s, seeing the end of the Cold War, the fall of socialist regimes in, or governments in uh, Eastern Europe, um, it appears that Gum Dinh Thang had the sense that this change was going to come to Vietnam as well. And he feared that if um, socialism came to an end, this would leave a kind of vacuum and that uh, if something wasn't solidified before that happened, then Vietnamese culture would be in, in huge trouble. So like Lung Gim Dinh and Zheng Nak Thêm, uh, Gum Dinh Thang also wanted to try to um, help people develop a strong sense of Vietnamese culture so that they could withstand the forces of um, globalization and could you know survive in what he believed would be a post-socialist world. Um, to do this again he followed the same technique of trying to show Vietnamese that they have this ancient history where certain cultural practices and ideas developed early and that therefore they should you know believe strongly in this entity that has existed in uh, he would ar he argued for so long to do this though he felt that there was a need to create a new um, kind of a, a history of um, Vietnamese thought um, a sơ lược lịch sử đưa đến Việt Nam and he envisioned that this would go on, this would take probably 18 volumes, the first of which would be devoted to prehistory or um, episodes of history that came before there was any um, writing and things were recorded in writing. So he, in his first issue, he explained his mission. He sent out a call to people to basically help him with this by submitting articles and sharing their ideas. And in the, in the second issue of Du Dung, some of these people um, you know, responded and their contributions were published. One contribution was particularly important and that was a tr Vietnamese translation of a, an article that, Amer that archeologist Wilhelm Solheim had published in 1971 in the magazine um, National Geographic called um, New Light on a Forgotten Past about recent archeological discoveries in Southeast Asia. And in this article, Wilhelm uh, Bill Solheim basically tried to shock his Western readers by saying, ha, you think the cradle of civilization, the cradle of agriculture was in the Middle East? Well, let me tell you, uh, in Southeast Asia, there are archeologists who are hard at work and they might end up showing us that um, the real cradle of Southeast Asia is in, um, the real cradle of civilization is in Southeast Asia. So um, I was a little, um, I qualified things a little there by saying um, these scholars may show us. In actuality, Bill Solheim was, had a stronger, uh, or said things more strongly in um, uh, that article and basically said that, you know, archeological research is demonstrating that Southeast Asia was the cradle of civilization. Uh, but in making those points, Solheim really jumped the gun and made some conclusions that no one had concluded yet. Set. Oh, my word, it's a false start. I think Usain Bolt's false started. No. I can't believe it. I think Usain Bolt almost unthinkably. I was talking about the, I was talking about the uh, but in making those points, Solheim really jumped the gun and made some conclusions that no one had concluded yet. And in fact, if he could have waited a few years, he would have found that the things that he thought were evidence for agriculture in Southeast Asia actually did not turn out to be that case, uh, did not turn out to be the case. And that therefore the things that he said in that National Geographic turned out to be a huge problem. But they were exactly the type of things that people like Gum Dinh Tang were looking for. And to understand 
um, what those ideas were and why they were so important to someone like Gum Din Tang, we need to look a little more closely at archaeological research in Southeast Asia at that time, and that's what we'll look at in the next video. Thank you.